Hello everyone, this week's lab will be about springs. We want to experimentally figure out the spring constant of a spring using two different methods. The first is going to be Hooke's law, and the second is by analyzing the period of a pendulum. So, we know that Hooke's law says that the force applied, F, the force applied on a spring, is equal to the spring constant, K, times the displacement from equilibrium, delta X. For our cases, we can rewrite delta x as the total stretched length of the spring when we stretch it, d, minus the equilibrium length, l. Okay? So, for our setup, we're going to start by hanging a spring from this rod up here. So, once we hang the spring on here, what we actually need to do first is we need to set it to zero length. We just need to preload it so that we get a little bit better data, and then it'll go easier when we analyze it. So once we go ahead and pre-stretch the spring, we go ahead and measure the length right here, and that's going to be the equilibrium length, L. So we pre-stretch the spring, and this length, L, the equilibrium length, is going to be 30.5. Now when we pre-stretch the spring, we're considering this right here as zero mass. Even though there is actually mass there, we're gonna say that's zero kilograms stretching the spring right now, okay? So to start taking the data, what we need to do is go ahead and start with 100 grams, go ahead, put it on the hanger, and you see that when I put it on, the spring will stretch downwards, okay? So now what we can go ahead and do is now we can record the length of the spring, which is going to be D in this case because D is the total stretched length of the spring. Now, and that's going to be in centimeters. Now, once we do that, that's going to be for 100 grams. We need to continue to add 100 grams each trial. Just add a little bit by little bit until the spring stretches. And each time we add weight, we're going to measure the total stretched length of the spring. So we want to do that starting with 100 grams all the way up to seven, 700 grams. And this does not include the zero mass that's initially on there. So once we have that, I'll go ahead and give you the data now. For 100.1 kilograms, it's 33.5 centimeters. For 0.2, it's 36.4. Then it's 39.2, 42.1, 44.9, 47.5, and 50.8. So now, once we go ahead and keep adding weight to the spring, we're going to stretch it further and further each time. So how we get the spring constant is we want to graph the force applied to the spring, mg, versus d, the total stretched length of the spring. Once we do this, we can go ahead and use the Excel graph to go ahead and calculate k, the spring constant. So that's the first way. The second way is using the period of a pendulum. Because the, uh, when the spring oscillates, if you pull it down a little bit, the spring is going to oscillate in simple harmonic motion. So we know that the period of this oscillation, t equals 2 pi times the square root of, oh, times the square root of m over k. So what we're doing for this one is we actually don't need to pre-stretch it anymore. So we're gonna start off with 350 grams on there. So the hanger's 50 and I have 100 gram and 200 gram mass on here. Once we have that, what we do is we're gonna stretch it just a little bit to cause the spring to oscillate and we're going to record the time it takes for 10 oscillations. So, for example, we would go ahead and pull it down just a little bit and start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Once we record that time, we can go ahead and use that to find the period, which is the time for just one oscillation. T. Once we have the period, we need the square, so we get T squared. Okay? Now, we know the period and we know the mass we had. So once we go ahead and calculate the period for 
the first mass, 350 grams, we add another 100 grams to the hanger, do the same thing again, record the time for 10 oscillations, and we keep doing that for 350 grams up to 850 grams. And we get all the different times for 10 oscillations. So I'll give those to you now. So the first one is 6.65 seconds. The next one is 7.55. Then it's 8.16. Then it's 8.83. Then it's 9.48. And finally, 10.08. So once we have these data points, these are just a time for 10 oscillations. So you need to find the period and then square it. And what we want to do in Excel is we want to make a graph of the period squared versus the mass of on the pendulum, or sorry, the mass on the spring. So this total mass, okay? Once we do that, we can go ahead and analyze it to figure out K, the spring constant of the spring, okay? So we have it two different ways. We can analyze it using Hooke's Law by stretching the spring, analyzing how much it stretches, Compare that to the force we apply to the spring by adding extra mass. Graph the force applied on the spring versus the distance, the total stretch length, and we can find the spring constant this way. And then for the, uh, with the, using simple harmonic motion, we can go ahead and oscillate the, sp the spring and mass. Then go ahead and record the period, uh, sorry, record the time for 10 oscillations, calculate the period, square it, and graph the period squared versus the mass, and then that way we can also get the spring constant. So there's two different ways, okay? So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or Professor Bond. But for now, I gave you the data, so you can go ahead and make the Excel graphs, do some calculations, and analyze the questions on the back of the lab sheet, okay? Bye.